Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Erin. And this is our Wyoming Life. So we're doing something a little bit different today. <laughs> and uh, Aaron thinks it's I was wondering funny. if you were going to start. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to do something a little bit different. And uh, this will be something that you can actually find on Patreon uh, here in the future when uh, we can post these back, uh, what, behind the scenes type videos, is that what you want to call it? So behind the scenes type videos, these will actually go on Patreon um, for our supporters on there. But we wanted to do the first one and put it right onto, uh, onto YouTube. Um, so that everybody can get a kind of a, a taste of, of what they would be, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is us without, uh, without scripts and uh, uh, without tractors, without animals, without gardens. This is us sitting in our living room. And uh, we've got a few questions that uh, we've been asked in the past and uh, whether they've been through the YouTube channel or through just people that we've met on the street and uh, some questions. So Aaron has questions, I have questions, and I think we're just going to kind of go back and forth and play off of each other and see uh, see what do we come up with and see if this is junk and see if we delete the whole thing. <laughs> so I'll start. Uh, the first question that I had was, uh, why did you start Our Wyoming Life? And we wanted to bring the consumer closer to the producer and help enlighten people a little bit about what ranchers and farmers do in their everyday life. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Aaron, uh, we got a GoPro for Christmas last year. And uh, at first, our, our first intention was to um, basically market towards our customers at Farmer's Market and see how, let them see how we actually do things, how we bring product uh, to Farmer's Market, whether it's uh, vegetables or beef or whatever, and kind of give them uh, kind of a behind the scenes look at what we were doing. But then uh, we made our first video, which was feeding the cows. And then that went a little bit like a fraction viral, just a little, <laughs> a little tiny bit viral. And uh, so that that kind of gave us a, a different direction to move in because we found out that a lot of our viewers weren't rural people; they were they were urban people and and yeah. people that live in big cities in New York City and, and Los Angeles is huge for some reason. So uh, so that kind of gave us a new direction to go in and, and be able to say. Well, maybe rather than you know focus towards our customers at farmers market, we can actually give people an insider look on what's going on. I think that's where we came up with the bringing the consumer closer to the producer thing. I think I answered your next question. I'll talk about it more. So our next question was bringing the consumer closer to the producer. What does that really mean? So like Mike said, we started out just thinking about our local farmers market customers and showing them where their lettuce and beef and stuff came from. So. 13 or 14 weeks out of the year, I get to be, both of us get to be in front of our consumers and get to have face-to-face -face conversations with them every week. And they ask us all kinds of questions and want to know, you know, everything there is to know about the products that are on the table. So we enjoyed that dialogue and we just really wanted to, we want to show other people that when you go to the grocery store and you pick up a bag of lettuce or, you know, corn on the cob, whatever it may be, that product has a story. And some farmer, you know, worked really hard to put that together. And lots of people have been involved in that process of getting it to the grocery store. And that happens on a local level, too, where, you know, I started lettuce seeds in February and, you know, it was the end of April before I could harvest them. So it's just that story of what goes into getting food to our tables. We all eat three times a day and often... Some of us more. <laughs> I, myself, you know, I'm sometimes guilty of not thinking about the work that's been put into that product coming to my plate. So we just want to share on our little local level in our corner of the world what we do to help feed people. And speaking of our corner of the world, it's kind of weird. Uh, we, we have some strange things around the ranch that people notice and they and they go, you know, and, and you don't think they would notice. I don't even notice really much anymore. And one of the examples is that is our next question. Um, somebody asked, what is with the foreclosure pending sign in the shop? And there's there's a story behind that, but it was actually before my time, before Erin and I got married, and she was involved with that. So when I, I went to college for a few years and came back and kind of just helped out on the ranch for a summer with my mom and stepdad Gilbert, and he had this junk foreclosure pending sign that he 
used to hang up and it was just ratty and rotten wood and stuff. So I was like, Gilbert, I'll make you a new foreclosure pending sign. So I spent a couple days and I painted that sign. But Gilbert used to like to put it up at his different ranches around the county and just kind of as a joke that poor old Gilbert was was in foreclosure. So he liked to move it around and and eventually we quit hanging it up. <laughs> I don't know really why. Maybe somebody told him it was in poor taste, but um, that was just Gilbert's sense of humor. So we hung it up on the shop and it's a it's a reminder of, of Gilbert and it's just a it just that's very much Gilbert and was his sense of humor. So Right. And you mentioned that he had three ranches. Originally there was three ranches. Gilbert bought this ranch that we're on in the early 90s. And in fact, it's the only one of the three ranches that's left. Um, but Gilbert bought this in, the, in foreclosure, actually. Yeah. <laughs> in the early 90s, he bought it in foreclosure. So yeah, I'm sure that, that hanging the sign out on the highway um, was was kind of weird. And, and that, that was my first ever viewing of this ranch. I used to, uh, I worked in radio here in town even before I knew Aaron. But I remember driving by the ranch on my way to God knows where. And uh, and seeing this foreclosure pending sign out there, and just kind of rolling my eyes, going, "Wow, that's uh, that's a little odd." But that's my first my first uh, experience with this ranch, and I never would have thought that that years later I would end up living here. What is your favorite episode? I don't even know why we did the episode <laughs> thing to start with. We started, you know, we started numbering them, and I don't know. I, I guess now we're stuck in that. But uh, um, my favorite episode would probably be. What's calf number one when we brought Gunther in episode eighteen or something like something that? Something like that. Um, that that was probably you know that was a good episode because um, Gunther was born uh, premature, um, seemed to be fine, went downhill fast. We brought him in. It was kind of like that whole story arc, you know, like you <laughs> saw from the very beginning. You know, you didn't get to see him born, but you got to see you know him right there with his first steps, and then him going downhill, and then him. It was like a it was like an episode of General Hospital. <laughs> It went up, and there was there was there you know there was twists and turns, and you know the he and then but at the end of the episode he was up and running around and he's fine, so I think that's a, a cool episode to even just like you know how it goes around here you know things yeah. go up and down all the time we have mornings where things will start out perfectly and then you know we we go down the drain fast and what was your favorite episode? I like calf number one. I like you Gunther. can't take my answer. That's my <laughs> answer. You have to have your own answer. That's my answer. Okay, yeah. my turn. Your turn. What do you wish you could have caught on camera that you didn't? How, was there anything that you wish that, that... Not so far. I, I'm super terrified of snakes, and I always run into the... We have garter snakes in the, in the garden, and I, I... And bull snakes. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that they're there, and I know that there'll be some that are in there every summer, but they, they scare me, and I, I run and scream like a little girl, and I hope that... That doesn't get caught on camera because it's embarrassing. Yeah. Or a skunk because you've ran from I run skunks, from skunks too. I'm not scared of skunks. I just don't. I don't want to get sprayed. Just don't want to get sprayed. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, what was the question again? What was the thing? Okay. The, what do you, you wish you wish you had caught? There's all yeah. kinds of stuff for me. I'm. You know. There's. Uh, the other morning, I got a call at six o'clock that our heifers were on our neighbor's place. Yeah. You know, and that would have been cool to be able to say. You know, to have a camp. That's the problem though when you're doing it by yourself. You, you you're trying to get something done. Yeah. And you, a lot of times you just can't say, okay, so hold on, stop. <laughs> I'm going gonna, gonna to set up a camera and then we're going to um, try to do this again. We had a calf that was born that was backwards that yeah. I ended up having to pull it out backwards. And that was one of those things. Um, I was out on the gator checking cows. I probably had a camera with me, but uh, I rolled up and the back feet were sticking out. And it was just like one of those, um, you know, you act now, you get it done. And, and, and I just uh, just did it. And then afterwards, you know, I'm bringing, I brought the calf back. And then it was, you know, so it was... You're thinking on the way back, man. I wish I would have, would have had a camera crew with me at that time because yeah. that would have worked. That would have been awesome. But uh, you know, it, 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 that kind of stuff happens all the time. Yeah, we need that camera crew to follow us around. Yeah, but exactly. they'd be bored because there's a lot of boring stuff. There's a happens. lot of boring stuff. I don't know. There's there's a lot of documentaries and stuff on TV that I watch that, um, you know, that or like the the not even like reality shows or whatever this is. I don't know what this is but uh, <laughs> so, so there's people that you know, I watch them on TV and it's like man these camera crews have to be bored 95% of yeah. the time because there's nothing happening especially with the animals because you know 99% of the time Mike goes and checks them and they're fine they're and fine. then you know but you get those those moments that are exciting mm -hmm. so yeah the camera crew would be bored but it would be handy uh, yesterday <laughs> I almost ran the model T through the wall Oh, yeah. We had we had hail and, and with the storm yesterday and we decided to put all the vehicles away and, 
and we pulled the Model T into a garage and I uh, kind of forgot how to stop because the Model T is really goofy and I ran it right into the workbench and the workbench stopped me and luckily the wall did not give way so yeah. that was kind of a little spooky but that would have been something interesting for people to see that I'm an idiot too. <laughs> I, can't, I can't drive apparently yeah I can't drive like somebody from 1924 so yeah. Hmm. All right what's our next one? Uh, how have your lives changed since you started the channel? We're getting close to the end, folks. <laughs> a few more questions. Um, you know, I struggle with, like, what am I going to talk about or how am I going to make dirt interesting and stuff. So that's kind of always hanging over me, personally. Um, we did get some, some local coverage of the channel. Um, we had some local press. The Casper News Station picked us up. Our local paper did a, a really nice story for us. So occasionally we get recognized. And I mean, with the farmer's market booth, and, and I graduated from here, so it's not like it's uncommon for people to recognize us. And Mike was on the radio, so they know him from the radio. But it was weird to get recognized for for videos on the internet. Um, it is. I, 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 the first time it happened, I was walking across the parking lot, and a lady <laughs> came running over, and she's like, I just want to tell you I love your videos. And it threw me off, because I yeah. was like, what, what videos are you, first of all, what videos are you talking about, lady? Because, yeah. you know, who knows what's out there. But, uh, <laughs> so, you know, but, yeah, I was like, and then it took me a second. I was like, oh, okay, I know, you know, and we shook hands, and, and, and uh, you know, no autographs or autographs or anything like that no. yet, thank God. But, um it was, it was in, it's interesting when people do yeah. come up to you and they say, hey, I like what you're doing. Or even we get emails from people now and we get yeah. fan mail, which I never That's thought would awesome, ever happen. Though. We get fan mail. And, and, uh, and it's, it's weird to, to see because there's, there's definitely been times there that I've been like, are we, are, is this worth it? Yeah. I mean, are we, maybe, you know, we should tone it down. We're really, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's hard to do sometimes. So um, there's been times that we've thought about stopping you know kind of thing but then you get a then you get a, a, fa a letter from somebody who says hey this is really important to us and this means something to us and and to be able to watch that which to me seems like weird that somebody gives a crap in a <laughs> we, weird way like kind of right after i don't know we were maybe 10 episodes in and stuff and like we got something that was like hey me and my friends were talking about this episode and we had this question and that was really strange to me and like hard for me to wrap my head around and still is that other people are talking to the people in their lives about what's happening in our lives. Yeah. So, but that's great because that's what we want to happen. We want the dialogue of where your food comes from to be something that people think about. So we're accomplishing what we want, but it's just kind of weird to, the other thing that happens to me sometimes is people ask me questions, very specific questions about like little, little parts of episodes that happened two or three episodes ago, but they had a question and it throws me off. Cause like we said, they all kind of blend together and it's like, I know I put videos on the internet, but it's still part of me thinks that no one watches them. Yeah. <laughs> so when people ask me stuff, it, it throws me off. So, yeah. and I kind of have to think back and go, well, you weren't there, but you saw it. So I, you know, I just have to answer those questions, but sometimes mm -hmm. it. And also the friends that we made through it. I mean, I never would have yeah. thought that would happen. I made friends, uh, hi Mike, a cop <laughs> in uh, New Jersey who, uh, who I talk to almost every day now. Yeah. And you, uh, the book, the I can't remember her name, but the lady, the author who got I have, a hold of you. I have a really great. There's a few ladies on Facebook that comment all the time and ask us questions, and and I really always look forward to their comments, and it's really been, it's been fun to reach out to the world and and answer questions and and visit with people. So. Mm -hmm. oh, that kind of I see that runs right into the next question. I think. Does the response to certain videos surprise you sometimes? The response to certain, you know, there's, it's funny. Okay, so if I'm making a video and uh, there's a lot of times that, first of all, there's a lot of times Erin falls asleep and I'm and then so she doesn't even see the video before she watches the video with you guys because she hasn't seen it yet. And I don't I'm, even watch my videos before they go out. I, Mike edits them and and you have to I, wear headphones because our our editing computer is in our bedroom, so I have to wear <laughs> headphones so that she can't hear herself talk because that drives her nuts too. Um, I, I I guess I like to hear myself talk. I don't know but, what that is, but. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so anyway, Aaron wants to get catches the videos with you guys in the morning and then, but, and then she'll ask me, well, what'd you think of the video? And I'm like, ah, it wasn't that great. And you know, I just, I didn't, I wasn't feeling it, whatever else. And then that's the one that gets 3000 views, you know, that yeah. day kind of thing. So I don't know. Um, that's, that's that, what surprises me yes. is the stuff that I think is not really that interesting. That's the stuff that people really pick up on. We have to remind ourselves, we talk about this a lot that, you know, nobody, most of our viewers are looking from the outside in. So most people, you know, just the tractor episode, 
you know, I think we had that conversation on like, how do you get in a tractor and how do you get out? And he's like, mm -hmm. Mike's like, I oh, we had that question asked to us. Yeah, you know, and Mike's said, like, do I really have to show someone how to climb a ladder and get in a tractor? But it's it's something that's we have to remember all the time. Like what we do every day is is can be so foreign to people outside of the ranching and farming community that yeah, that's what we want to do is show people the the minute details that they never have thought about, but we do every day. Mm -hmm. I have one more question. You do. I'm right. done. Woo! <laughs> What is coming up on our Wyoming life? Oh, that's a good question to end on, too. That worked out well, back and forth, and oh, then you, you picked a good question. <laughs> what is coming up? Uh, this weekend is branding, Yes. and that's going to be a live, what is it, live? Live feed. Live stream, live feed. Uh, we're going to try it. Uh, we haven't done it before, so hopefully I don't screw it up. But uh, we're going to set up a camera, um, and I, okay, there's a way, somehow you can use multiple cameras, I've read, but we're just going to try one, because... <laughs> That'll work. Um, we'll move that camera around, but we start uh, we start branding early. Um, we'll start sorting uh, about sun up. Uh, we'll get a camera out at some point, and then we'll be able to move that camera around to different vantage points, so you can see uh, exactly what we're doing with branding, bringing the calves in, vaccinating, um, banding or castrating, um, and branding, and and be able to get right. We have a lot of people coming out, apparently. I, mean, I, I don't, think, yeah. Yeah, Erin has to cook food, so she should probably know how I many have to people cook, are coming. Uh, yeah, I need to know how many people if are coming. If you're coming, <laughs> then just message us. Erin <laughs> will know how many that's hot all, dogs to cook. Yeah, that's all happening Saturday, so. That's Saturday, yeah. And then Sunday, I think what we're gonna do is take that footage and then put together a, an episode yep. out of that, which will come out at some point on Sunday or Monday, Monday depending <laughs> on how hungover I am. <laughs> Um, I, if it, we're 32 days, 31 days, I think from our first farmer's market of the season. So I am pretty, pretty, really? yeah, that's it. Wow. Um, pretty much involved in market prep. So the gardens are just kind of doing their thing. I don't really know if I'm going to have anything for market yet. Um, well, you're going to be gone for the first market. I'm going to be back for the first market. Oh. So I'm going to be at the International Master Gardener Conference in Portland um, in July, the first part of July. So market is, our first farmer's market starts July 15th. So I fly in super late on Thursday. Mike's going to pick and wash vegetables for me. And then I get to bake on Friday and then we'll go to market on Saturday. So, so uh, the questions, if you guys do have questions, you can email us your questions. What our plan is, is to do these question and answer type things and then post them on Patreon for supporters exclusively. And then eventually um, we'll roll them out to, to YouTube users as, as well. Um, we don't expect people to, to, you know, never ever see what's going to be on Patreon because I think that would be, that's not really fair. No. You know I mean? If, it, but if you want to see it right away, please support us on Patreon. Right. Right. And uh, other than that, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. We'll wrap it up. More work to do. Lots of work to do. Not today, though, because I think I just saw a cow fly by. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, anything else you want to add? Just thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Um, like us on Facebook and Instagram. We post lots of stuff throughout the week. Um, so if you miss a video, catch us on Facebook. So Cool. Thanks for joining us in our Wyoming Life. What is your favorite episode of our Wyoming Life? Um, the one where... Part, um, move we'll call part two. Why is that your favorite? Because Bambi's cat got born. Right. And how about you, Grace? Do you have a favorite? Mom, can mom, mommy tell with me? You want me to tell with you? Oh! Whoa. Do you want to tell us what your favorite video is? No. All right, Kenzie, what is the best part about having a YouTube channel? Um, making the video. Not on the you computer, like, like going around the ranch and making it. <laughs> All right, Mackenzie, what is, what is your favorite animal on the ranch? Uh, calves. Any certain cow? Um, Princess Blizz. <laughs> Thank you.